<laughs> ah, that'd be it. Yes. <laughs> no worries at all. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Um, everyone should be able to see that. Uh, I've just knocked up a quick sort of preso. Um, okay. Uh, just give that there. Uh, so my name's uh, Simon Lindsay. Uh, I'm Singularo on Drupal.org uh, and all over the place, basically. Uh, um, so, yeah, you can find me by that. Uh, I've been working with Drupal for over 23 years now, um, which uh, when I'm thinking about that sometimes makes me feel like that <laughs> about uh, how long it's been. Um, in today's session, I'll just touch on a little bit about my Drupal history, uh, a little bit about Aussie Angels, enough to give sort of some background on why we needed to do this token filtering, um, how we did it, uh, and then I'll do a, a local uh, demo, and I'll probably break some stuff, uh, and uh, there's a repo with all of the code that I'm going to show available, which I'll uh, make public uh, towards the end of the, of the session. Um, feel free to jump in with questions and that sort of thing at any time if you like um, on anything you see. Um, why Drupal? Uh, so I came to Drupal from, uh, I used to ride dirt bikes um, and I had the website mydirtbike.com and we started that out with uh, PHP BB and we looked at PHP Nuke and there was a, there was a few things around at that sort of time. Um, 2002-ish, I reckon, um, 2001, uh, and I borrowed some code from Drupal and uh, it worked really well. Uh, and I used that for the dirt bike website and then for some other things. And I thought, why am I doing this? I shouldn't be borrowing the code. I should just be uh, using Drupal and basically switched all those years ago and have been a... Uh, staunch supporter of Drupal ever since, uh, contributing some core code way back way back then, um, and have some modules that I still look after. Uh, at the time, I reckon it was a JavaScript calendar pop-up that uh, convinced me that uh, the community was going to build better than, than what I could build. Um, and uh, to this day, uh, I still don't really like JavaScript that much and uh, like to be able to just install a module that has all of the stuff in it that uh, does the work for me. Um, I'm now working for Aussie Angels, uh, which is sort of a two-sided marketplace, marketplace that connects investors uh, with lead investors to fund startups as part of a, a syndicate. Um, so it's a way that startups get funded um, through that. Uh, it started off as like a, a spreadsheet based system with the found, founder of Aussie Angels. They graduated to like Airtable and a no code solution. And uh, then they started developing a, a Drupal version. Um, and but why switch from like a no code solution to Drupal um, for Aussie Angels? Uh, they did it because it's a startup business and speed to implement things is, is very important for them. Uh, despite this, when I joined Aussie Angels, uh, the Drupal 9 version wasn't ready to go live. Um, I came on board in December 2023. Um, and by April 2024, we had migrated the Airtable data and went live with Drupal on AWS using ECS, ECR, RDS, and you know, all of the acronyms, acronyms uh, and all using Docker, basically. Uh, myself and Nick Haas uh, now work for Aussie Angels and uh, keep on adding features and doing things uh, that they want. Uh, we have a Drupal 10 branch open and almost ready, but we're not quite ready yet. So we're still on Drupal 9.5. Uh, that said, the code that I'm showing today is all Drupal 10. Uh, okay, enough of that, all that. Uh, let's sort of talk about tokens. So with Aussie Angels, we have a sort of a system where people create deals and uh, admins within Aussie Angels use can set up a template for a deal based on uh, what uh, sort of settings are right for that particular 
lead um, investor. And then, uh, and that has like percentages and a, a couple of value fields that we want to put into some, some text within uh, the deals that get created. The problem is that the standard like token browser, as you can see on the on the screen there, it has like, and that's just the node uh, token values. And there's there's a lot, and we didn't want to give the uh, our internal admins access to use all of those. We only wanted to allow them to use certain fields that were relevant to the deal process. So what we wanted was for something more like this. So it just has like a couple of fields listed in there. They can use those ones and, and away they go. Then when the deals get created, the templates only have those small values, a uh, uh, small number of values in there. So how do we get there though? Like there's, I searched, I couldn't find a module that sort of does this filtering um, or reduces the, the count. And if, as soon as you say node or user, in the, the token browser, you get like a whole bunch of stuff. So I uh, investigated and found that there's a token tree builder service uh, that does the work and provides the, the, the data for that, that pop-up. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's, that's okay. We can, we can take that service and adjust it. And of course we don't want to hack core like, you know, back in the old dark days. Uh, so we need to alter or extend a service. So went to the Googles and uh, alter an existing Drupal service actually gives the exact page straight away, um, which is awesome. Um, and it comes up with this page here. I'm not going to go through and, and tell you what it, you know, go through it in detail. We'll touch on the bits, but uh, it gives exactly what you want. Um, it extends the language manager service. Um, we want to use the, the token tree builder, but, you know, same sort of thing, and it replaces it. So, presentation. Uh, so what I did was to make a replacement token tree builder, which is a filtered version. Um, it needs to be backwards compatible because we still want to get all the features that are in there with uh, like the pop-ups and the automatically populating into the editor and that sort of thing. Uh, so we have to take that into account when we build it. But this is how you swap in the existing, uh, swap the new service in and replace the existing one. Uh, there is a caveat on that uh, web page, which it talks about naming. And you have to be very careful when you name your replacement service, because if it doesn't follow the Pascal case and followed by service provider sort of naming conventions, it won't get picked up. And that bit me at first, but uh, you, know, you, you live and learn and you get better. Um, so that's that's all fine, but how, how are we going to implement that, how are we going to do something that's uh, a flexible flexible way of restricting what's shown? So this is basically the code that uh, is used to display the, the node tokens uh, in the previous screenshot, and it gives you like a lot too many. So what we wanted to do was to filter, but there's not much there except the token types uh, section. Um, this one here, and that one looks like we could probably extend that a little bit um, and use that for getting our extra parameters in there. So what I did was change some rule of, uh, well, made it so that we can do this sort of thing. A percentage uh, and an exclamation mark. Um, the percentage means I want these fields in there and the exclamation mark means I don't want these ones. And it's just like the, the first part of the string. So it's just a, a very simple string match. And we can use explode, of course, to split the string up and, and get back to just having the node there as well. Uh, so based on that, we then uh, put together a new version of build renderable, which is the sort of uh, the 
bit that is used in the tree builder. Uh, so this is part of the service class that extends that tree builder and just loops through and takes the percentage fields and puts them into a filters array, takes the exclamation uh, identified fields and puts them into a removals array. And you, it also needs to build out this token types array so that we can call the parent function. Um, so if you had like node and user and you could combine more using this sort of system um, and filter it down, you could have some user fields in there, but only one or two. So yeah, basically I built it to be as flexible as possible. Um, pretty procedural uh, code, but it works fine. And because it doesn't get called very often, it's not like, it doesn't matter that it's not hugely performant. Um, so we do some processing and then we call the parent build renderable down there so that we get the original functionality. Uh, so this is the second half of that function, basically where it loops through and then removes the filters that don't exist, uh, that don't need to exist. So there's like an unset in here and unset in here. I'm gonna explain it, and, you know, go through it line by line, but last thing we do is sort it as well. And what that ends up with is a nice short uh, or reduced token tree for the end user. So what I'll do is show you some uh, how that actually works. So if we go over here, So this is just going to do a quick install uh, with some default content. Just go in. So just a standard page content type is all I've extended at this stage. So we've got browse available tokens has been added. And you can see we've got a nice reduced list of tokens here. And if you look at the code, switch to presentation mode. Um, at the moment, it's removing the foo bar field. If we comment that out and switch back. So that's this one down here. Refresh those tokens. And so it's no longer excluded. So uh, you might have noticed in that one that uh, how we found that is we had some fields named like up to a certain point the same, but then later on they differed and we didn't want those in there. So we didn't actually add in the the removal part until later in the later in the um, development uh, once we realized that oh there's actually some extra ones we need to remove um, from there. Uh, so functionally, after you've done this browsing and you've inserted the tokens, everything works exactly as it normally does. If you manually put in tokens that aren't in the token browser, they work fine. It is all just a UI thing to make this uh, the token browser uh, simpler for our sort of, not administrators, our internal admin staff. So they don't want to see everything. And the end user, of course, never sees it at all. So, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I this is implemented as a standard form alter, uh, and uh, yeah, you can just do it that way. I have also done it as a bundle class, um, and that's how we use it. Um, so. But it's exactly the same sort of code. It's just implemented in the bundle class instead of in a form alter. And I can show that if you are interested. Go back here. We shouldn't have we've got no token filter at all. Enable that. 
switch back, reload one more time. Oh, and of course it didn't work. I didn't know that. All right, I'm going to blame the demo gods for that because that was working. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, th th that was working earlier, so I apologize. But the code is very much the same sort of thing, it's just using a bundle class, standard sort of bundle class process, and uh, yeah, this same code in there. Any questions? No. <laughs> Is it? I've got a question. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's more a content editor question. So, you, with your con content you're creating, it's quite, you need a lot of dynamic values within your WYSIWYG. Is that because it every page is sort of different? Is why you don't template it or need those? Or is it repeatable values again and again that you want to update if you update it in one spot? Uh, so when it's displayed to the end user, it's, um, uh, no, it's, it's sort of intermediate. So, uh, per the lead negotiates sort of, uh, contract arrangements, like the percentage yeah. of, um, uh, the terms for how they do investments, uh -huh. and they, they don't get to change it. Our admins set that up, but when they create the deal, there's a text field that populates automatically with those values yeah okay no that makes sense no, i was just interested in, in the use case because I, I often use tokens but i guess more in the configuration side of the, the website when you're doing i guess like uh, set up for not in the node but just more i don't know emails i guess is where i've used them and things like that but um yeah, yeah. no interesting and it it is kind of nice to have a simplified token browser because it does get out of control when especially when you do i think it's a token extras module as well but it's, um, oh yeah, yeah. There's, it gets there's, wild yeah there's lots of things to add more tokens but i couldn't find anything that reduces the number of tokens um and uh yeah after some investigation it wasn't too hard uh which is which is good um oh if there's any interest so the full uh there's a the service provider there and yeah, like it's a very small amount of module code. Basically, I showed the whole the whole lot. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, go back to the presentation and pop. Oh, there you go. As expected, it didn't actually work. Um, uh, and I'll publish all of the code on the just on my GitHub, um, which has both methods of operating the bundle class and the dot module style um so i'll make that public shortly i think i should be able to do that straight away if i click on the right thing uh, maybe due to cache it didn't work uh sorry maybe it is cached that's why it is not working. Let me just, I'll just do that. Let's jump out of that and stop sharing screen. Sorry, uh, what was that question? I was just saying that like after installing module, uh, generally we don't need to clear cache, but yes. maybe it is, that's why it's not working. Uh, no, I've, it wasn't um, that because I have done just that same procedure multiple times. So I'm not sure it's, uh, it'll be something that I've done trying to be smart and uh, then got distracted with the server down issue. So I apologize. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's just check. Yeah. There's no git changes either. 
yeah, not, not sure, but I'll check and make sure that the repo works okay um, for anyone that wants to have a look. Um, I can put the link in here as well. Into the chat messages. Yeah, if, if there is no more questions, um, thanks, thanks for that, Simon. It was really, really great. I'll stop the recording um, just now.